Welcome back to the Grind, Sleep, Repeat podcast. Today's topic is going to be about how you can utilize and optimize your nutrition to better perform in your workouts. Before we hop into today's podcast, if you're somebody that after listening to the podcast today has more questions on nutrition, on your workouts, and you're looking for a structured program and a plan, we obviously have this gym here in Nebraska. So if you're local, we'd love to help you out any way that we can. But if you're somebody that is not local and you're looking for an online coach, we actually do offer online training. So if that's something that you're interested in learning more about, we have a form down in the comments in the description below. You can head over to fitgrindformula.com or click that link if you're listening or watching on YouTube. You can fill out a form and we can set up a time to chat more about your goals and tell you how we can help you reach your goals of losing weight or building muscle or increasing your performance. Today's topic is going to be about how you can utilize and optimize your nutrition to better perform in your workouts. Yeah, performance in your workouts is something that is going to be directly related to how you're feeling your body. And this is something that firsthand you and me have found out that you can shoot yourself in the foot by under fueling your body, under hydrating your body. So what we want to talk about today is even if you have goals of losing weight or building muscle or whatever your goals, your body composition goals may be, you still need to feel your body properly. And even if you're trying to lose weight, you can't just say like, Hey, I'm going to cut all these calories out of my diet because you're not going to have energy to come in and have good workouts and consistently get through those workouts. What's up? Come on in. Come on down. (laughs) So, you know, jumping right into one of the first topics that I think of, think of right off the bat is going to be utilizing your carbohydrates and how to prioritize your carbohydrates to get through workouts and optimize your workouts. So, obviously we want to make sure we're eating enough carbs before our workout. And sometimes we, we can even add in our carb source during the workout, depending on how long the workout is. Um, and then remembering to properly recover with some carbs too. Like I try to utilize most of my carbs around my workout time because that's when I'm going to need them the most and utilize that carbohydrate source the most. Yeah. So many, we've talked about this so many times before in podcasts and YouTube and Instagram, carbs are not bad. Carbs are a great source of energy and there's so much, you know, publicity and hype in the media around like keto diets. And I'm not going to get into like, this is the best, this is the worst. But if you're looking to optimize performance through your nutrition, carbohydrates are going to be one of the best fuel sources. And even if you're trying to lose weight, you still need to have good quality carbohydrate sources in your diet. Now, when we talk about carbohydrate sources, we're talking about things like rice, whole grain pastas, oatmeal, whole grain breads, fruits, potatoes. Yes, good quality carbohydrate sources. What we're not talking about is cereal, um, Pop-Tarts, cookies, candy. Like, yes, those are carbohydrates, but they're probably not the best source of energy because you're going to get blood sugar spiking all over the place, and it's just not going to be a, a... a sustainable energy source. So when we're talking about carbs, that's what we're talking about is those good, healthy carbohydrate sources. Those are going to be broken down once you eat them. And when you're training and you're working hard, your body is going to be more likely to hold on to glycogen. And what I mean by that is those carbs are broken down in your body, converted to glucose. And that glucose is able to be stored in your muscle in the form of glycogen to be used whenever you're working out. And that's actually one of the primary sources of that you'll use for energy throughout strength training sessions and higher intensity sessions or sessions that go longer than 30, 45, 60 minutes. So eating carbohydrates just because you eat them doesn't mean that it's instantly converted to fats. And I think that's one thing we want to really drill home is that you have to eat enough carbs to fuel your performance. Even if you're trying to lose weight, I'm not saying that you should eat 500 carbs. If you're trying to lose weight, that's not going to work well, but you have to ask yourself, what is your goal? And you have to still structure your macros in a way that it's going to help you reach your body composition goal while also not hindering your performance in the gym. Because if you're not eating carbs, you're going to come in here, you're going to be a zombie and it's just not going to go well. 
Yeah. So just as an example, just to give our audience kind of an example of what that looks like when we're loading carbs around our workout. For me personally, for breakfast, I'll always have a protein and a carb source. And sometimes I'll add in some like butter or avocado on my toast. So I'll have two pieces of toast and then I'll do the butter or avocado and then egg whites. I'll let that digest because that complex carb needs a little bit of time to digest. If I'm not doing the toast, I'll do oatmeal too. And then that will prepare me for a good solid workout. If my workout goes over an hour or goes into like two hours, or if I'm combining weight training and cardio, then I'll add in a liquid carb source in that workout as well. And then post-workout, I'm doing a scoop of fit grind protein with like a banana, something that's going to um, give me that energy right away. Cause yeah. fruits are technically a simple carb that's going to, you're going to be able to use that right away for energy. Yeah. Around most of your meals, like the way that we'll, and everybody's different depending on their goals, but typically what we'll do with the nutrition clients or even any of our clients that we're structuring nutrition is each meal, you're going to have a carbohydrate, a protein, and some sort of vegetable if you can or fruits breakfast you might not want a veggie but you know that's why we have our greens powder that helps you just get your five servings of, of leafy green vegetables but at each meal you're having a protein a carb and a fat and some sort of vegetable that's going to give you a really balanced meal but if you're structuring the food right around your workout like you mentioned yeah like doing fruit is a really good option like that's something i'll do all the time within the hour of the workout i have an apple or banana those carbs are going to be broken down very easily and you're going to be able to use them. Um, but for most of your meals and also eating those good carbohydrate sources like potatoes and rice, it's going to keep you full. It's going to keep you satiated and it's going to reduce your hunger and your cravings in between meals. The protein is also the uh, really important part there too. And you know, we talk a lot about carbohydrates. The carbohydrates are the fuel source. The protein is there to help you recover, help you repair because when you're working out and you're training intensely, if you're trying to optimize your performance, you're breaking down muscle tissue. You're constantly breaking your body down. And the only way that you're going to recover is one through adequate protein and then two through adequate rest and sleep. Um, so we've talked about this before. We talked about this last week. I'll just go over this real quick. 0.8 to one gram of protein per pound of body weight. That's the good rule of thumb. If you can, ideally, I would try to get to one gram of protein per pound of body weight. You're going to feel better. You're going to recover better. You're going to have better workouts. Um, you're going to have a lot less soreness and fatigue if you're eating that 0.8 to one gram of protein per pound of body weight. If you want to test this out for yourself, try like a week of eating under that and then see how you feel and try a week <laughs> where you eat at that 0.8 to one gram of protein. Yeah. Spread guarantee, that out through the day. Yeah. I guarantee you're going to be a lot less sore. You're going to have better workouts. You're just going to recover better. Yeah. And feel satiated throughout the yeah, day. Yeah. You're going to feel full and satiated. Yep. Yeah. And as far as our fats, we obviously want to get fats in throughout the day too. So we've talked about carbs and protein and spacing those around our workouts. And then um, when we're in a diet, we want to kind of save the fats for later on in the day because the fats are going to take longer to digest. So they're going to keep us full and satisfied longer as well. But typically when I'm in a lower carb diet, which is when I'm in a deficit, I want to keep those carbs at the beginning of my day because that's when I'm going to be the most busy. Unless you're somebody who works nights, works out at nights and has a different schedule. But for the average person who works during the day and works out in the morning or during the day, you want to utilize those carbs at the beginning of your day. And then at the end of the day, you know, that's where you could do for dinner, do maybe you're doing like a steak or a salmon with some veggies. And we just slowly decrease the carbs as we get into the evening. Yeah. That's for, for weight loss, you know, like, and that's why we always talk about, we give different options because so many people have so many different goals mm -hmm. and you still can train to get stronger or improve performance while still in a caloric deficit. It may be a little bit harder if that deficit is too sharp. So I've, I've told the story before last year when we were training to our, it was both of our goals to like be in the best shape of our life for a wedding. And it was my goal to get to 8% body fat. And I was, I was in a sharp deficit and I did not have energy and it was affecting my overall performance. So 
you have to keep that in mind too, that depending on what your body composition goals look like, if you're trying to get to like a lean body fat percentage, like a sub 10 for guys, it's going to affect your performance. Don't, don't be surprised when your strength drops, when your energy, your libido drops, like all these things start to happen. Don't be too surprised. Um, but if your goal is health and to be healthy and be the best version of yourself and get stronger, um, be co- become more aerobically and anaerobically fit, those carbohydrates can be structured c- kind of throughout the day around your workouts. We talked about this last week too. Um, also carbohydrates during the workouts. So my kind of rule of thumb is depending on what my goal is, if it's to lose weight, gain weight, I'll still use carbohydrates. But my rule of thumb is if the workout goes longer than an hour, that's when I'll start to use carbohydrates. Um, if it's a run longer than an hour, start to use gels and stuff like that inside the workouts. And really probably want like 15 to 20, maybe 30 grams of carbohydrates every 15 to 20 minutes extra that you're working out over an hour. Um, so a lot of times when we do a strength training and a conditioning workout, we don't separate it. We'll do the same workout and it might be like an hour and a half workout and we'll use carbohydrates within that workout to keep the performance up. Um, but this kind of also leads us into hydration too, as well. I was just going to say yep. and electrolytes, <laughs> which is also important for performance. So I'll let you kind of start on that. Yeah. Just making sure that you're staying hydrated throughout your workouts throughout the day is going to help you also feel full and satiated. Yeah. So getting in a good quality electrolyte, like the fit grind electrolytes that we have during our workouts throughout the day, you know, when we're sweating, we're losing a lot of sodium. So we need that to stay hydrated, especially on a run. And there's some people who sweat a lot when they, they lift. And so just constantly making sure you're staying hydrated is going to keep you feeling full and satiated too, and help you with the recovery process as well as the nutrition side too. Yeah. Electrolytes are, are one of those things that they're a big hot topic in the fitness world right now, but why we came out and why we come out with all of our supplements is because these are things that we personally believe in. We're not just coming out with supplements just to come out with supplements. Like we started off with the protein. We launched our chocolate whey protein. Now we, our second one was our pink starburst electrolyte. Our previous one or our most recent um, addition to the supplement line was our mixed berry greens. These are all products that we believe in and electrolytes are no, no different. We will typically use electrolytes intra-workout, post-workout, sometimes pre-workout if it's going to be like a long run. And this is a prime example. The other day, actually just yesterday, I went for a run and I've never cramped up before. I cramped up mid-run. I didn't use electrolytes pre-workouts. You know, I can't say that that was the cause. I might have been underhydrated, or I, you know, I did a leg day the day before, but I have never cramped up. I immediately got back, drank, drank some electrolytes and I felt fine. So to me, that tells me I was not properly hydrated for that run. It wasn't like I did anything crazy, but it just helps you increase your performance. It helps you every time that you have a muscle contraction, it takes electrolytes to produce that muscle contraction. And every time we're having that contraction, we're losing potassium, magnesium, sodium. So you need to replenish that even if you're not sweating. And then say you're sweating on top of that, you need to replace electrolytes even more. And a lot of times people that are training hard, they're prioritizing their fitness, they eat clean, they probably don't get a lot of sodium in their diet as it is. So that's exactly why using a supplement like our pink starburst electrolyte is going to help you give your body the, the electrolytes that you need for optimal performance, um, to avoid cramping, to avoid any sort of issues in your performance within your strength training or your endurance work, either or. Yeah, there's 500 milligrams of sodium in our electrolytes. And when we tell people that, if they're not educated on why exactly we need this product, then they can go, oh my gosh, that's a lot of sodium. You know, I'm supposed to be on a low sodium diet. There's a difference between taking an electrolyte supplement with good quality sodium opposed to eating foods that have, that are packaged and processed and table salt. So there is a difference in quality. And I think that's one thing that, you know, some people think, oh my gosh, that's a lot of sodium. I'm going to get bloated. You know, my doctor says I need to be on a low sodium diet. Those are things that to keep in mind too, like there's good quality versus bad quality of sodium. Yeah. (laughs) And it's, it's the blend too of, it's not just sodium, it's sodium, magnesium, and potassium, three crucial electrolytes that you need for optimal performance. Um, 
typically, so say we're going to do a strength training session. What I'll do is a lot of times I'll mix up one scoop of our pink starburst electrolyte and I'll sip on that throughout the workouts. Um, if it's a really sweat, sweaty workout, say it's like a really hard leg and conditioning workout, I'll do an additional scoop post-workouts. Um, if it's a non-training day, I'll kind of drink it as I'll mix it in water cause it tastes really good and I'll drink it there. And then running is, it really depends on this. If it's going to be typically I'll do one scoop before run any run. If it's going to be a run that's longer than 45 to 60 minutes, I'll carry a handheld water bottle and I'll do some intra. And then I always do a scoop of electrolytes post run because I'm super sweaty and I push out a lot of sodium. I, I would actually like to do that test sometime. Um, just to see how much sodium you lose per half hour, hour of sweating. And just to really hit, the, to prove that point of like, you need to replenish your electrolyte levels because we eat healthy. You know, it's not like we're dr eating foods with lots of sodium as it is. Um, just something that's super important that I firmly believe in to add to your supplement and your nutrition regimen to increase your performance and sustain your performance. Yeah. And I just have one more comment on the electrolytes. If it's a day that you're not sweating and it's, you know, even if it's like a winter time, it's cool outside and you're not working out per se. It's something that you can incorporate in the morning, right? When you wake up first thing, cause you've been sleeping all night, you've slept, you know, eight hours and you're dehydrated. Yeah. So the first thing to do would be to hydrate with an electrolyte versus grabbing a caffeine source like most people do. So maybe even just replacing that and remembering to drink that before you go for the caffeine yeah. to be hydrated first thing in the morning is, is also going to help you with your overall performance in the gym. Because if you come into the gym and you're dehydrated and then you, you sweat and you you dehydrate yourself more, you're going to feel that. And, and that affects your workout and your energy throughout the day as well. Yeah, no, that's, it's a huge thing. I, I'm a firm believer and electrolytes. We took electrolytes for a long time before we launched our own because we saw the, the benefits. Benefit. We saw what the product actually does to, to help your performance and just your overall training. So yeah, those are kind of the main tips that we have around improving your performance um, through your nutrition, through your supplementation. There's a lot of other things that, that we could talk about, uh, maybe not with nutrition. Recovery is a huge aspect of getting good workouts, you know, it's hard. For, it sounds hypocritical for me to say like get seven, eight hours of sleep every night. I'm not somebody that typically sleeps seven to eight hours, but if I could, I would, but that is the professional recommendation that we would try and give people is like, if you're trying to optimize, you know, this whole podcast is about optimizing performance. Sleep is a big part of that. So you're going to recover while you're sleeping. So ideally if you can get seven to eight hours of sleep every night, that's a big thing that will make a big difference in your training, not only the recovery, but also just that next workout the next day. If you can get mm -hmm. good sleep and you can feel rested and recovered, you're going to be able to come to the next workout with intensity and passion and really put good effort into that workouts. Um, so sleep is something that you can ask yourself real quick, like how much are you sleeping each night? Is there any way that you can increase the amount of sleep, even if it's an extra half hour or an hour to recover and just try to optimize your recovery from sleep? Yeah, sleep is definitely something that's going to recharge you and give you that extra energy to put in the effort in the gym. But another thing too, I've realized as I've gotten older and I'm still working on this, but listening to my body. So just because I come in here and I want to give effort six, seven days a week in the gym doesn't mean that I should. Like the gym for me is like a stress outlet. It's a way to release, you know, endorphins and, and get my body moving and feeling good. But every workout doesn't have to be a PR day. Every workout doesn't have to be balls to the wall. You know, one day might just be a stretch and recovery day and a walk on the treadmill or a nice run outside to get outside and, and clear my mind. But I think that's something I've learned too is like in the past, which probably back in like when I was like in my twenties, I feel like I had that energy to come in here every day and give it my all. Now that we have three kids, they're in sports, we own a business, you know, like you said, we're trying to get optimal sleep and prioritize nutrition. It, it is a little bit harder. So you, you do have to listen to your body so that you have the energy to give effort on 
at least three or four days of the week, if yeah. that makes sense. So, so we're not trying to give effort seven days of the week, at least make sure that you're saving some of that energy to give max effort at least three or four days of the week. Yeah. I think there's a lot to be said. You know, we, we trained for seven days a week for years and I love training. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I love training. I still love training. We currently train six days a week mm -hmm. and something that we found over the course of the years that we trained seven days a week is we would go through phases where we would get burnt out, not really burnt out, but just our fatigued. body felt wrecked, <laughs> fatigued because we're not people that are doing deloads. Like ideally, yes, you would do a deload where you let your body recover. I don't like doing deloads. I, I mm -hmm. just, when I come to work out, I'm there to work out. I'm there to work hard. Yeah. I know the benefits of deloads. I understand the science of it, but it's kind of those like do as I say and not as I do type of things where it's just hard for me to do a deload. So what we've realized is that by taking one day of rest, we kind of avoid that burnout fatigue. Um, and you're also just mentally always excited to work out. Yeah. And one of those days is a run. So we go outside yeah. and, and we get to do something different. Yeah. And we're still active on the rest day too. So it's not like we're just sitting on the couch. Like it's an active rest day. You could go for a walk. You could go for a bike ride. You could play with your kids. Like you could do a lot of different things. It doesn't mean you just don't do anything that day. But I do personally believe that there is a big benefit to taking one day of rest each week because it's going to allow you to take one step back and take two steps forward. That's type what of approach. I, yeah. yeah. I, I feel like, you know, even if having that one rest day, if we wanted to sit around and do nothing, I don't think that's even possible when you have kids. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, they Preach. constantly want to be entertained and constantly ha we have sports to run around with them. So, you know, and then work, like typically we take off Saturdays and Jordan will work Saturdays for like seven hour shifts. And then I'm out running kids around and, you know, doing all the, the kids stuff. So we're both staying active. And then by the time you come home, we're typically out running around too. Um, something we've really gotten into, we haven't done in a while, but is going outside playing tennis with the kids and, yeah. you know, just, we do walks a lot. And, yeah. 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 Something I personally enjoy is, is going on a walk through in the middle of the day, turning on a podcast, especially after I'm done eating helps with some of that digestion. For so sure. yep. mental health stuff. Yeah. So these are top tips to improve your performance through your nutrition. You cannot out train a bad diet, but the same thing is you can also not train optimally with a bad diet. You have to make sure that you're taking your goals. What are my body composition goals? Okay. This is my goal. This is my goal. What are my performance based goals? Okay. This goal, this goal, and then what nutrition strategy, what diet is going to best get me to those goals. Yeah. You can't just think you're going to lose weight and get stronger and be able to run faster and get shredded without having any sort of decrease in energy. Like it's just not going to happen. So Wait, you mean you can't eat McDonald's and work out really hard? No, <laughs> not to optimally, not to train optimally. Okay. You could. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's a little plain devil's ad. Yep. <laughs> but you know, just take a look at your nutrition. If you guys have questions, We'd love to help out any way that we can. Let us know in the comment section or reach out over social media. Um, we are very passionate. We love talking about nutrition and fitness and, you know, we just love helping people out and just helping them realize the benefits of prioritizing a healthy lifestyle. We'll see you guys in the next episode.